I want to um, explain today is my delineation approach to delineating the sign. You know, because for the life of me, I don't understand what other astrologers mean when they say this sign means this and this sign means that. And then when I'm delineating a particular sign, they're like, they're asking me, how can this be? And how can that be? How do you arrive to such a conclusion that this means this and that this sign means that? So let me show you, all right? The, everything astrologically made is mathematically founded, right? The, the whole science relies on an astrologer knowing what date, time, and place of birth, geo-coordinates you were born in, because the position of the sky relative to the, your, your, your location on the earth has a bearing on the apparent motion and how things appear to move over certain points in the chart. And from those motions, from those contacts, the meanings are derived. So I want to get in today get into the day how I delineate the signs. I'm not saying that there's no other way to read, all right? I just want to show the structure of it to show people that there is a structure to it that is not an intuitive, guesstimated science, all right? So let's deal with the chart per se, all right? All right, let's deal with the chart per se, okay? You have 12 sectors in each chart just like you have 12 sectors in the zodiac all together all right and the most influential part of the day is when the day begins so the chart begins at a specific point right right here due east we call this the ascending all right and the ascending is just one single point there but it has an influence over this entire 30 degree fractal, all right? So whatever sign is placed here at the ascendant, whatever sign is rising through the course of the day speaks for the entire chart. In fact, in cosmophysics, we believe that the house cusps are actually aspects, rays, you know, that point to the ascendant that they all have influence on the ascendant, right? So the opposing sign, the 180 degree sign, because of its place and its function, has an influence on the ascending sign. Now understand the ascendant deals with the character of a person, which has nothing to do with your birthday sign or your sun sign, because the sun could be in any one of these places in the chart throwing a specific ray to the ascendant. Each one of the cusps of the house, the first cusp, the second cusp, the third cusp, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, the tenth, the eleventh, and the twelfth, they all have a particular influence that astrologers reference as aspects, where it's not conventional thought to think that the houses are aspects of the ascendant. But what I understand is that at a, a planet at any given point in the zodiac, let's say right here, has that these, these aspects, the 180 degree aspect, the 150 degree aspect, otherwise known as a quincunx, okay? The 120 degree aspect, otherwise known as a trine, the, the square aspect, which is 90 degrees, okay? that the cusps of the houses are actually created because of the aspect that it throws to the primary sign. That's my theory, that's my application. To give an example of this, okay, we got the, the tenth, the fourth, the seventh and the first, okay? These are known as the angular houses. These are the strongest points of the chart. In any system of astrology, like that is Vedic astrology, that is Western astrology, classical or modern, right? These four houses, and it actually, pardon me, it actually comes from 
Egyptian thought that a planet rises, you know, and it comes to its strength and then it goes to its weakness and then it has to regenerate as it comes back up. These four points, these culmination points, or, or these, these sensitive points are where the chart is the most sensitive. Planets that, that are in these houses give the most indication in, of impacting events and life processes and conditions in a person's life. These are the principles that you learn in your fundamentals, right? So we understand that this is the sign is symbolic to the sign of Capricorn. This is symbolic to the to the sign of, of Cancer. What this axis represents is the mother and the father. All right. Traditionally, or in, in classical astrology, this represented the father. And this represented the mother. And I don't even know really if that's classical astrology. I could just say that Arabian astrology. Okay? But we live in the 21st century now. We got single parenthood going on. And this access represents parents, period. Because I've noticed by observation through, through, through the several clients that I've had that when I look at the sign that's in this place, and use it to describe their mother. Sometimes I've been corrected, man, you're really talking about my dad. That's my dad you're talking about. Or vice versa. And so I can't say that this always represents the mother and this always represents the father or vice versa. This always represents the mother and this represents the father. This is the parental aspect. And especially because of the, the trend of single parenthood, this axis describes that single parent. In, in total, all right? So, now, what we understand about parenthood is that the, the main thing we, we get from our parents is they feed us, they feed and nurture us, right? And they discipline us. They give us our discipline, all right? And the, the sign of Capricorn is the sign of discipline in its natural place. His natural placement in the zodiac is here at the top of the chart. And therefore, the 10th house takes on some of the characteristics of Capricorn. And the traditional fourth sign is Cancer. And it represents the mother feeding, nurturing. And it occupies the fourth place naturally. So the fourth house or the fourth cusp is symbolic to that part of life, that influence in life. Well, when we look at the ascendant, which represents the individual. The ascendant naturally forms a square, a 90 degree aspect to both of these places. All right. Now let's discuss the square for a minute. All right. The square, the 90 degree aspect. You know, we get certain schools calling it the harsh aspect, difficult aspect, malefic aspect, good or bad aspects. You know, the reason why it's considered to be bad or harsh, it gives indication of discipline or limitation. It gives indication of necessity. It indicates for the need for comfort, safety, or what have you. So, because the parents naturally provide discipline, they raise you, they rear you. This is also the place of heredity, right? You can't do without it, you know? So it's not something you can just cast away, right? This influence, whatever sign there, describes the type of influence that it has on you as proper limitation. Limitations with this society or this uh, culture is not normally concerned of as good, right? So they call it a bad aspect. But no actuality is something that is necessary, absolutely necessary for structure, all right? When they attribute planetary influence to this square aspect, they, they say that it belongs to Saturn, which is the planet of structure, discipline, limitation, obstacles. But more the structure side of it is, is, is what you should be focusing on if you're going to use this as a tool for self-development and self-knowledge. Okay, that's just that was just one example of how the placement of the sign reflect the nature of the aspect that it creates to that place. All right? Now... Therefore, the same rule applies to every other place. And 
Maybe I can convey to you with this lesson the idea that when somebody says, I'm this sign or I'm that sign, how you are actually all 12 of them. Because we have 12 houses, okay? You got the first cusp, then you have the first house, okay? You have the second cusp, then you have the second house. You have the third cusp, then you have the third house, okay? The space here is the third house. This is the third cusp. And there's a difference between the cusps and the houses, all right? And we will often find that certain signs are halfway in this house and halfway in this house, but only one cusp when we're using the equal house method, and that's all we use in cosmophysics, is only one cusp sits in the sign, and therefore, the cusp determines what the house is, no matter which portion of this sign sits this cusp, this cusp determines what this house is, okay? So here we have it like at 26 degrees, that means only four degrees of this sign is in the first house, and uh, or 26 degrees of this sign is in the 12th house. You should understand that the way we determine what the first house is occupied by is determined by what sits on the first cusp, all right? Now, I've already stated how the position or the distance from this point of the sign is what determines the nature of the aspect that we use to do the mathematical degree, the, the measure from here to there. That aspect has certain characteristics because of the nature of the, whatever sign sits here to the, to the nature of whatever sits here, all right? And it goes for every other, for every other um, aspect as well. I gave you an, a, a brief example with this square. I could have elaborated on that for, for, for two days, really. But, so I'm just trying to arrive to a certain point for you to understand. All right. Let's say that we have the sign of Scorpio in the place of focus, right? That's a four. All right. Let's say Scorpio is here, and some of the uh, one of the key words for Scorpio, all right, is uh, mysterious. Okay. So. I often, in, in, in the beginning of my training, in the beginning of my studies, wonder why. Why mystery to Scorpio? And what makes Scorpio so mysterious? Is it just mysterious just because they say so? You know what I mean? Like, wh what makes it that? And, and then when you find um, a lot of astrologers using movie characters and specific movies to describe uh, uh, Scorpio, or to illustrate what Scorpio is, you find that they use the most mysterious character or the, the, the character who is surrounded in the air of mystery. And this, and this reputation that Scorpio gets for being the most mysterious. Why would that be? Well, when we look at the structure of, of the chart, we can begin to understand why that may be. All right? The first house is a primary characteristic, okay? But this primary characteristic derives all of its qualities from the placement of every other sign in the chart. Okay, and what I mean by that is, let's just jump to the trine aspect, right, which is the creative aspect is 120 degrees from the ascendant to the fifth house and from the ascendant to the ninth house, okay? Both of these aspects are 120 degrees. They are known as the trine. They are often illustrated on the ray in the chart by a little triangle like this, okay? And that is to give you an indication that this line you're looking at is a trine, all right? But the, the trine deals with the first to the fifth house aspect. I mean, every time you have a trine, if you had a planet here in the second house, then the planet trining it 
would, would either be here in the 10th or in the 6th. Because it would have to be 1, 2, 3, 4, or actually counting the house that it's at. 1, 2, 3, 4, the 5th house from itself. Okay? Now, if you count the house it, it, it itself as one, right? So, when we look at the trines, the aspects that give strength in the chart, those aspects that indicate strength are the trines. We find that the fifth house is the place of natural ability. Also, strength. The strength of a person is considered to be determined by this 30 degree fractal, the fifth one. This one being the first, from here to here being the second. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, right? In the place of strength for Scorpio, we have the sign of Pisces, right? Which is the sign of privacy. You know, in his most elementary basic presentation, the, they say that the fifth house is the place of love. Okay? And the place of children. Okay? So now, you can say that the child of mystery is privacy. Right? The, the mysterious person is going to have a natural desire to create privacy for himself. Right? This is why Scorpio is mysterious. And this is one of the reasons, one of the illustrations that can demonstrate how it is so, okay? Now, let's look at the other trine. The other trine of Scorpio is Cancer. The sign of the mother or parenting, right? Or protection. You know, these three key words belong to the sign of Cancer. And the ninth place of Cancer, I mean, the, in the ninth place, the ninth place being Jupiterian or Sagittarian in, in presentation, tends to expand or um, amplify the qualities of whatever sign is here. So we can say uh, very mothering or very nurturing. We can say uh, um, overbearing as a parent or very protective as a parent. And because Cancer, the parent in the ninth place would be so, that describes Scorpio. So we got two descriptions from the combinations of the sign on the house according to his chronology from the primary sign that we're studying. Therefore, it can be illustrated that Cancer plus the ninth place or the ninth house equals Scorpio. You see? So all of our descriptions for the sign of Scorpio are derived from the places of the signs in their relation to the place of the sign here. I'm going to give you another example, all right? Okay, now, I also wanted to throw in this note. You know, you I'm not really giving up all of the basics here. Some of these things that I reference, you can go online anywhere here at YouTube and find what all the 12 houses mean. You understand? You can, so I, I don't, I'm not taking the pain to go through all of those fundamentals here. I'm trying to make a certain point. And that point is that the sign that's in focus, which is usually here found here in the first place, right? It gets all, it derives all of its characteristics from the positions of the other signs in their places because of what the, how they aspect, because of the aspect that they throw on that sign. It is the same if you put focus on the third. If you put focus on the third house, it has its first house, which the fourth house, pardon me, it has its second house, which the fourth house is the second house of the third. It has its third house. Thus, you see certain universal laws being related and let's say that the fifth house is the place of talent right and natural ability and the third house is the mind all right you 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 won't find too much uh, uh differentiation from from those two attributions of those two places in any system of astrology okay well if we understand that the third house is a natural form of expression 
for whatever you're putting focus on, then the third house of the third house is the fifth, and the talents are the natural form of expression for what for, for mentally created ideas, right? So we find certain universal laws in play with with um with with the houses. Now there's another relationship between the signs that needs to be understood, okay? And this, in my mind, is what I theorize is the, the reason behind the idea that both the sidereal zodiac and the tropical zodiac both give indications that are accurate depending on the skill of the astrologer, right? And the reason for that is that whatever sign is first, is the energy or the frequency or the activity that gives birth to the next sign. And that sign gives birth to this sign. And this sign gives birth to that sign. And to demonstrate that, then we need to understand a little bit about the houses and the signs themselves. But I'm going to take, it, take, for example, here, let's say Libra, okay? Libra, which is the sign of partnership. Okay? It gives birth to Scorpio, which is the sign of reproduction. Okay? And you can't have reproduction without partnership. It takes two to make one, right? Well, after Scorpio comes Sagittarius, which is the sign of multiplicity. Right? You can't have multiplicity without reproduction. Right? The next sign is Capricorn, which represents restraint. Or restrictions and the need for restriction would never exist without the existence of expansion or multiplicity all right after Capricorn comes Aquarius and this is the sign of freedom and the idea of freedom is born out of the act of restraint right from freedom brings us to Pisces. Let's say a key word that we're going to use here for Pisces is inspiration. Right? It is from freedom that, because Pisces first, you got to understand what Pisces means, what it's like and stuff like that. Right? Pisces is, in one hand, is dissolution. It's, it's not solid. It is like vapor. Osmosis, going from an area of greater concentration to an area of lesser concentration, like water when it evaporates, it escapes and it is let free, it is let go. So from the act, the concept of freedom comes the ability to exercise whatever you're inspired to do. And from that comes the sign of Aries, okay? which is the sign of self-projection, self-expression. Self-projection, I would say, okay, is, is the better way to describe Aries in this, in this example. So, and from self-projection, we get to the sign of Taurus, objective experience. Or to say that we acquire experience through our self-projection, which in turn becomes information. Right? It becomes the subject of conversational communication or writings when we convey it, which is exactly what the sign of Gemini represents. It is thought processes, okay? They emerge from 
of the things that we experience through applying ourselves or projecting ourselves in a certain situation. So from, from this is born the sign of cancer. The need to bring comfort or safety um, or from the emotions, right? We, we, we develop a specific sentiment as a result of how we think from what we experience. And which gives birth to the Leo. Leo represents love. It also is it gives indication of um, creativity. So it is from that emotional sentiment that we are able to create an idea that needs to be worked out. Virgo, you see? It needs to be put into practice. It needs to be practically applied or refined, right? So that it may be presented to another on a cooperative, interactive level, and it just continues. And these are just examples of keywords, concepts, right? We, because each one of these signs carry a multiplicity of meaning. But this was just to demonstrate how out of one sign is born the next. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or visit the website, link down in the bottom. And don't forget to share it. Tell a friend, tell a friend. Tell them to come visit my page. I'll shop in their game right on up phone. You know what I mean? Come and see me. Check my page, all right? If you want to know a little bit more about cosmophysics and how I apply the science of astrology, check out my videos here. Subscribe to my channel, all right? Visit often. Leave your comments. I can interact with you. Visit my website, Cosmophysics.